I want to talk about something beginners don't think about when they're new to 3D design, and that's doing the ideal sketch profile. Most people just dive in head first and they start modeling and it create a lot of sketches and features that just make it harder to edit down the road. So what if I told you that sometimes like this one, you could get 90% of it done if you do the right sketch from the beginning. Let's talk about a simple example and then let's look at the iPhone stand. First, when it comes to doing an L bracket, I've seen beginners do it this way. They come in and do the first, the rectangle, and they extrude it. I'm going to skip dimensions and constraints for just a minute. I'm going to extrude that, and now I'm going to come to the back side and sketch another rectangle. So there's multiple challenges to doing it this way. The first challenge is I have two sketches that aren't necessarily tied to each other, right? If I need these thicknesses to always match and I want the links or this feature depth to match, that's just more to manage and I may have to do parameters and constraints. And instead, let's just sketch an L and we actually can just extrude an L you do have the thin extrude, but let's finish this out and play fair. So we'll do offset, or we could sketch it, either one, drag it to the other side, finish it, and then we're going to extrude this. It's done. So as you can see, this is a lot easier to edit. I now have one sketch, one feature that can easily be adjusted. I could remove that dimension and make, you know, this thickness different from that thickness. Coming back to the iPhone stand, when I look at this, it can feel intimidating when you're brand new, but if you give it some thought and pause for a second, it might be easier to come in from the side and do this shape. I'm gonna use a different method for this one. I'm gonna sketch a line that kind of outlines this, and then I'm gonna use the feature fillets to control this even, even more, right? And you could do this all in one sketch, that's fine. Now let's try to build the iPhone stand with a good sketch profile. I'm gonna sketch just simple lines. I'm gonna ignore dimensions uh, just as I'm getting started here to show the example. Come down, come up at an angle, come up. And what I wanna do is hit extrude. When I extrude, it doesn't wanna do anything by default, but instead I'm gonna use the thin extrude. When I give this a depth, I now can come down and adjust the wall thickness and kind of add thickness to our design. We could also put the thickness on the other side of the line or even center it across that line. And now what I'd like to do is reinforce some of the load bearing areas for this print. So I'm going to come in and do either a chamfer or a fillet. And let's add some of these smaller fillets that help finish out the model. So I can bring in these rounded areas. We'll reinforce this top portion, make it stronger. I'm gonna hit the plus sign and then let's do some of these smaller areas that are more just aesthetics. And we can even adjust these, make them all two. Hit okay. And one fillet I wanna mention is the full round fillet. If I come over the fillets and choose full round, I'm gonna choose this flat face as my center face. You can see it rounds it perfectly for you. That's very handy. I'm going to come down and select this center face. It rounds as well. So you can see adding fillets at the feature level um, is going to allow me to come back and edit these easily as well as I kind of like working with it in the solid. But it's up to you. In the original sketch, we could come in, offset everything, finish the sketch and then kind of sketch out all the arcs and fillets instead. And just as an example, you could sketch out this shape with offsets, putting in arcs and fillets for your rounded edges. You could do all of them or do some of them in the solid. Totally up to you. I would prefer to sketch this shape and then extrude it, add my fillets kind of after the fact. So when I go to extrude this, I notice there's a problem and you've probably seen this in my other videos. I love this technique when it comes to diagnosing problems with your sketch. Simply sketch a line and you can do multiples, but I sometimes just like to do one. I can tell that there's a problem um, over on this left side of the line where it's white, not this light blue. As I drag over, it's showing there's still a problem here. 
if I cross it, um, it looks like there's something here. As I zoom in, looks like I left these as reference geometry and not solid, so it's not sure what to extrude. I hit X on the keyboard, they're now solids again. And now I can extrude this shape and then add those uh, any additional fillets that we might want. For the cutout, um, one thing I would like to do is come into this backside, hit sketch. I'm going to use the slice command and that will hide anything that's in the way and allow me to see what I need to see when I'm sketching. It shows everything at the sketch plane. And when I'm off at an angle, if I simply select a face and use the look at, it'll look straight at it. And now what I want to do is sketch a rectangle down here, centered, and cut that out. So one of my favorite tricks for centering, I have uh, lots of different ways to do it. I like to connect to a midpoint if I can, sketch a line, make it construction geometry with X, and I like to connect this to that midpoint. And there we go. Now it's centered about that line. I could throw in my dimension. I'm going to use the cut command. I sometimes like to overlap the cut so that if I do make design changes, it's going to update pretty easily. When I hit OK, it now cuts that out, and I could come in and add the additional fillets. 